2022's finishing off with a bang. Just a wild finale to this year. They've set off the fireworks a little early before New Year's because a fat load of goofiness was just dumped on us like a filthy, stinky golden shower. We received a delivery for a package of drama that not many people ordered or expected. So I just wanted to do like a little ESPN halftime show and just kind of give everyone the update on where everything's at because so much has happened all at once in just the last 24 hours. It's hard to keep track of. So I'm just going to be here as like your navigator on the ship. The first and obviously largest topic to begin with is the Andrew Tate situation with him and his brother Tristan being arrested in Romania on human trafficking charges. At least, that's what was initially reported by every major outlet ever. However, this has been developing in a very interesting way. It's like diarrhea in a swimming pool. The water's getting messy. Because it started circulating on Twitter that he wasn't arrested on human trafficking charges, it was money laundering and not human trafficking. The genesis of this claim started from an account called Rap TV, which I'm not super familiar with, but from everything I can read, they're not like the end-all be-all of truth tellers, but they made a post claiming that human trafficking charges against the Tate brothers were bogus. It was actually them being apprehended for money laundering suspicion. However, that tweet's now been deleted. And while they've deleted that tweet, this one still remains on their account about it being an alleged human trafficking probe. So to me, that says that they must have got word, like officially, that it wasn't money laundering. However, that narrative still exists on Twitter and has led to massive debates about what's the truth behind their arrest. I haven't seen a single major outlet run with this narrative other than a couple of random accounts on Twitter. Not even like news accounts or anything like that, just actual random individuals running with it, even though that tweet has now been backpedaled. Every major outlet that's covering the case hasn't mentioned money laundering a single time. Which I suppose you could write off as a big conspiracy to keep the truth under wraps, I, I guess. But most of them are just focusing on what the prosecutors are claiming to have found, with like six women who had been sexually exploited. These are big claims and obviously nothing's proven yet, so we're gonna have to wait to see how this case plays out, which is exactly what I said in the last video as well. It's not some kind of done deal. This is a big investigation that's been ongoing for some time, so we're gonna have to see how everything turns out. Now, I also do take a lot of information from outlets with a grain of salt, as everyone should. However, when every major outlet, including official sources involved in the case, as well as video evidence of the arrest and everything is coming out, it's no longer just a rumor and potential fake news. There's clearly something going on here. So the reason why I'm mentioning that right now is because this really exploded this morning when Andrew Tate on, on Twitter made a statement of his own. He tweeted, The Matrix sent their agents. And this led people to believe that it was all a hoax from the beginning. He's clearly free now, thus all of this was a bunch of baloney. But that's not the case because he was only being detained for 24 hours from the start. It's been 24 hours, thus they let him go. Like a fish back into the water. Like he's home, he can tweet, you know, he could even make another video smoking a cigar if he wanted to. But it's not because he's free from the investigation or anything. He's just free from the holding period. From everything I have read and from everything I've seen from the sources, like the, the real sources, like the officials, he is still being investigated on the human trafficking charges and they're currently trying to lobby for a 30-day extension on his detainment period while they continue to investigate. So he is able to tweet, talk, and do everything he'd like to do now, but that doesn't mean that that, is, that proves his innocence. They let him go because of that, at least not in anything I've read so far. Now, maybe that changes in the next couple hours. It's very possible. But like I mentioned on stream as well, I am not surprised that he is not being held in prison for the duration of this investigation. Him being released on bail, I could absolutely see being a permanent thing throughout the entire investigation and being able to do what he wants online. Like, that's not surprising in the slightest. But it makes no sense, like, a ton of takes I saw on Twitter this morning about, like, how my video is now completely incorrect because Andrew Tate is home tweeting. No. It's not. Everything I said isn't invalidated by the fact that he is past the 24-hour detainment period. That was always going to happen. That doesn't disprove anything. Everything about, like, the claims and all that are still there and the investigation is ongoing. He is just able to tweet and do what he wants now because of the detainment period expiring. Like, it, it's just delusional to say that now it was all just rumors being spread. I may feel real fucking silly now, Charlie. No, I was reporting on all of the facts that were presented from the, the video of the arrest, 
from all of the uh, the claims made by the prosecutors and everything going on there. I, I was talking about those and even mentioning we're going to have to wait to see how everything wraps up. And now we've had a more recent development with what's going on in the investigation. And now he's past the detainment period. So maybe Andrew Tate will even make a public statement about all of this and give more insight into what's happening. Like, it, this is not something that's surprising or unexpected. And it doesn't all of a sudden magically make everything I said in the last video wrong because all of those facts are still currently facts unless that gets overturned in the next few hours, which again, it could happen. It's very possible. I'm not denying that. I'm not there. I, I'm, I don't have a secret camera installed in Andrew Tate's home. I don't know what the truth is. I'm learning the same as everyone else. That pizza box theory had a lot of weight behind it with where that source came from making the claim. So that one is still currently intact as well. And a lot of people are harping on that, like, how could you ever believe it was the pizza box? Well, because they even said it in, like, their initial reports. Like, th that is still there. Which, it could be overturned. All of it could be. As it develops. And so we're going to wait and see. I'm just talking about all of the information that's available and what's going on. So yeah, just wanted to clear that up. And I know a lot of people have been stressing about this uh, with Andrew Tate and his brother being arrested. So he probably had a difficult time sleeping. And maybe it's because of the stress, and maybe your mattress just isn't that great. So I'd like to thank Helix, the sponsor for today's video, because maybe it'll help you get some sleep in such troubling times. Big thanks to Helix for sponsoring today's video. Helix makes premium quality mattresses that are conveniently shipped to your door and perfectly match your sleeping needs. They have a Helix sleep quiz, which will match you to the perfect mattress based on your body type and sleep preferences. So if you want something more firm, or something a little softer, it'll find that out in the sleep quiz and match you with the perfect mattress to accompany that. So I've had a Helix mattress for about two years now and it's still the perfect fit for my body type. It's not super firm and it's not super soft. It's in that nice limbo in between. And it's still a, a comfort level I haven't seen in other mattresses since. It was a super quick and easy process to fill out the quiz and get that mattress and I absolutely think it was 100% worth it. It was also just super easy to get it all together since it was shipped right to the door. It comes rolled up in a box, you just unroll it and then you're pretty much set to go. And there's even a 100 night sleep trial that lets you test the mattress to ensure that you love it. And if you don't, you know, no, no problem. Helix mattresses include a 10 year warranty and they offer financing options for flexible payment plans. So if you're interested in getting a premium mattress to match your body type, make sure to go to helixsleep.com slash moist to get up to $200 off plus two free pillows. Next up is Logan Paul once again making a fool out of himself. He posted this picture on Twitter, I guess as a little prelude to his upcoming response to the CoffeeZilla video series that exposed him for a massive crypto scam called CryptoZoo. He's been teasing that he's going to respond to it on January 3rd, and then he dropped this little nugget of cringe on Twitter today. He's cosplaying as CoffeeZilla with his standard attire, and the caption is just coffee and cap emoji. So I'm led to believe, as are most people, that what he's doing is a satirical investigation on himself, where he's going to be diving deep into CryptoZoo and everything that happened there. And I imagine the shocking revelation from his investigation will be that he's innocent. Logan Paul investigated himself and found out that it was actually everyone around him that was evil, not him. He's the good guy. Logan Paul has cleared himself of all charges. He is innocent on all accounts. Uh, like I said in the initial video, I really am excited to see his side of things. He's maintained that CoffeeZilla got it wrong. So I'm really excited to see from his perspective. You know, I'm pumping my fist to watch... Ace Attorney Paul get out there and set the record straight and present his evidence from his side. If I had to take a guess at how he's going to work this case, I imagine he is going to focus very heavily on Eddie and Jake the Crypto King. I'm not going to get too deep into this because maybe some of you aren't familiar with the CryptoZoo scam that Logan Paul was exposed for, so I won't get into the weeds of it, but I imagine he is going to drill heavily on those two characters as bad actors while downplaying his involvement with the project even though he was the face of it and the one that actually put it on the map promoting it. So I feel like he is going to really laser focus on those two being bad. And once again, everyone involved in CryptoZoo was a scammer, so they're all bad. But he's going to really minimize his involvement in the entire project and just focus on the other people that were also bad. That's what I think will result from the investigation, but I am super open to be proven wrong. I just wanted to put my prediction out here just in case it happens to be accurate because then it looks really cool. 
But I am a little pessimistic about how this is going to play out for him because he doubled down on the cringe by posting this video or this picture as a reply, which is just a picture of a broken coffee mug with coffee on the floor. That is so lame. I really hope this is just a stock photo and he didn't set this up for a photo shoot because that is embarrassing. Now the next crazy topic that's happened over the last 24 hours is YouTube secretly rolling out a huge policy change, like an absolutely massive change to the platform that overnight demonetized tons and tons of channels. Like entire channels being demonetized, uh, very popular channels losing monetization on like half of their catalog of videos. It's a big change that YouTube didn't publicize so no one saw it coming. It snuck up and surprised everybody. It's a change to their policy in regards to profanity and in regards to like violent gaming content or anything involving violence even like in its anim in animated forms and shit too. So I actually won't talk about it too deep right now because I made an entire video going over the entire subject because there's so many moving parts to it. So I'll post that later on tonight. This next topic actually isn't super new, at least not in regards to the other ones here. It's not something that's happened over the last 24 hours, but it's still one I want to talk about because it's just a trend that continues to infuriate me and a lot of other people as well. The Last of Us showrunner is once again doing the standard thing of belittling the games that they're adapting for the show. This is a terrible strategy that's been used by many shows that have come before Last of Us, most notably and most disgustingly by the Halo TV show where the creators proudly proclaimed that they never played the games and had no interest in playing the games, which is what the fucking franchise was based off of in the first place. It's just this continued trend of shitting on the games and making it seem like you actually don't care about that at all. Like, what is the point? Why make an enemy out of the fans of the property you're adapting? It is just so nonsensical. It's fucking lunacy. I don't get it, and they continue to do it. Just loving the smell of their own farts so much that their entertainment medium is so much better than video games. In video games, it's just pixels that are dying. In TV, it's people pretending to die. It's so much more highbrow than your lame-ass games. We're doing you a favor by adapting that trash into our HBO Last of Us show. Here's his whole statement, and I don't even disagree with it. it like, it's not incorrect. It's just useless to say because it, this comes across as you not respecting the game you're adapting. When you're playing a section, you're killing people, and when you die, you get sent back to a checkpoint, all the people are back, moving around in the same way. Watching a person die, I think, ought to be much different than watching pixels die. Yeah, I mean, it should be different. But why say it this way? But when you say watching pixels die and, like, downplaying the emotional impact a game can have on someone and just reducing it to just pixels on a screen, you're clearly showing some kind of bias towards not really liking games, the game itself. You could have said this same message very differently. Oh, in The Last of Us, you know, death was always very emotional and did a great job in the medium, and we're hoping we can take that same energy and deliver that same emotion in our field. We're hoping with our show we can faithfully adapt the video game characters into the real world, and it's going to be a little different because now it's human beings you're seeing here, but hopefully it can still hit the same emotional beats the game did. Like, you're saying the same thing, but in a very different way. It's very clear that you are showing a lot of respect to the source material your, source material that you're adapting. I was very optimistic for The Last of Us TV show, because for me it sounds like something you can't really fuck up, since it's such a clear roadmap to follow. It's just like there's very little wiggle room to ruin it. But now, after reading this statement, I have to scratch my head and get a little curious. Well, how much did they play the game, and do they even like the game they're adapting? Because it seems like time and time again, studios pass off these adaptations to departments and people that don't even play or like the property that they're adapting. So why the fuck do they keep getting the projects? But yeah, that was really the last big topic that's happened recently that I thought was important just to get the like cliff notes out here about what's going on. A lot of these stories are still developing, obviously, so I'm very curious to see where all of these uh, end up once uh, they reach their conclusions. And uh, that's about it. See ya.